It is actually possible to charge your e-bike or your electric skateboard or any other PEV with a campfire or a barbecue or a stove or anything else that produces a lot of heat. Let me explain. The way this works is with something called a thermoelectric generator, which much like a solar panel uses light to produce electricity, a thermoelectric generator uses a difference in temperature to produce electricity. Basically, you heat up the bottom and cool off the top, and that difference in temperature between the two sides is what produces power. And to me, this is definitely the most interesting way to generate power on the go compared to the other options, hydroelectric, solar, and wind. My little DIY build here costs 30 bucks to make, and its peak output is 20 watts. That's 28.8 volts at 669 milliamps. And this whole thing only weighs 888 grams. And if you stick two of them together, that's a peak output of 40 watts. And building these things is dirt easy as well. You basically take six Teague chips off of AliExpress, wire them in series, glue them to the top of a Dollarama muffin tin with thermal glue. And then on the top, also from Dollarama, is a big metal tin that serves as the cooling reservoir that you fill with water. The inverted muffin tin traps hot air in the muffin tin pockets, which heats up the bottom of the chips. Then you fill the big metal tin on top with water, which which serves to cool down the top of the chips. Now you can pick it up and dump out the water to replace the water or snow as needed, but what I do in order to not screw around with all of the wiring is I'll actually drill a small hole in the base of it to let the water slowly drain out over time, and that lets you just keep replenishing it with snow and water over time without having to actually move it. So with my little setup here, I've got two of these builds stuck together wired in parallel to a solar charge controller, which boosts up the voltage to 54.6 volts, which is what my e-bike battery charges at. Thermoelectric generator definitely have some drawbacks compared to the other options. For one thing, they're easily the heaviest of the bunch in terms of bang for your buck wattage to weight ratio. For my build, which is probably one of the lightest you'll find, it still pales in comparison to a 120 watt solar panel, which weighs just as about as much, but produces five times the power. As well, unlike the other options, which are mostly fire and forget once you have them set up to charge, thermoelectric generators require constant tending. At the very least, you have to keep feeding fuel into the fire for your heat source. If it's water cooled, you have to keep cycling cycling out the water, or at the very least adding fresh water in, and you also have to make sure that the unit as a whole is not getting too hot, which can actually damage the thermoelectric generator. It's also by far the most fragile option. The thermal stresses of heat on the bottom and cold on the top, the repeated heating and cooling cycles of the entire unit, and if the entire unit gets too hot, the materials inside of the chip can actually start to break down. And then if you do a DIY build like mine, sometimes you have loose wires hanging out, if those get too hot, those will melt. Now that's not to say it's without its benefits. For one thing, it's not as situationally dependent as the other three. With wind, it requires a strong wind. With hydroelectric, it requires a fast-moving water source. And with solar, you both need the sky clear of any obstructions, and you can only use it during daylight hours. But with thermoelectric generators, you have firewood as fuel everywhere, and if you set up next to a water source or there's snow everywhere, you have a constant source of cooling, which doesn't even matter if it's an air-cooled unit. So they are a bit bulky, but the benefit of a bike platform, especially an e-bike platform, is that you can go a bit heavier with your gear. With my little setup here, one on each side and a pannier bag and that gives you some mobile charging options if you find yourself stuck in between charging spots on a bike packing trip or if you're going on a camping trip and bringing your e-bike with you and your campsite does not have electrical service you still have an option to charge up your e-bike and explore around camp so with my little setup here i got two of them stuck together that's 40 watts my super 73 s1's battery is 696 watt hours so if you do the math that works out to be 17 and a half hours to charge from completely empty to completely full and since i get about 25 kilometers off of just the throttle no pedal input, that works out to be about a kilometer and a half of distance added every hour. And to find out how much your battery would take to charge, you take the total watt hour rating of your battery and divide it by the total wattage of the generators. So if you haven't guessed, one of the things that I really like doing is finding ways to generate power on the go to charge EVs both big and small. And if you want to see that in action, click the card.